everybody. This is Alex Ross, your professor for CVE course, and I'm excited to bring you a new program series called Kids Math. This is a step-by-step -step series of programs that will allow you to help your children learn mathematics, or directly the children can use it to learn mathematics. It's so very important for them to learn mathematics, and remember what Benjamin Franklin said, a word to the wise is sufficient. And so it should be sufficient for me to point out that mathematics is what your children and you can use to make your life better and improve it. This step-by-step -step course, I'm trying to make it as simple and easy as possible and help you learn the relationship of numbers. If you learn the relationship of numbers in mathematics, then you will find that it's a lot easier to understand mathematics. And let's begin by talking about numbers. Here we are at the beginning of our kids math class and I'm reminding you of what Benjamin Franklin said in Poor Richard's Almanac. And he said a word to the wise is sufficient and that actually is something that came from the Talmud years before, many many years before. And what it means is if you're smart you'll pay attention to what we're teaching you and then you will learn uh, what you need to know to be successful in life and math is of course one of the most important things involved in that. And our first class is about numbers. Now numbers are symbols that show quantities. For instance right here we have a picture of three dogs and I can count them here. One, two, three basset hounds. And so if someone were to ask me how many basset hounds do we have here in this picture I would have to say that we have three basset hounds, or three dogs, in this picture. So numbers are a way of allowing me to quantify the number of objects, or in this case dogs, that are in this picture. So that's why numbers are very, very important. Numbers can also be used to discover new information. For instance, here's a picture of a license plate. This number sequence on this license plate can be used to identify a specific car. So that way, if a policeman's looking at a car, if someone's looking at a car, we know whose car that is by using these numbers. So numbers are also used for identification. There's many types of numbers. For instance, there's a whole number, like one, two, three, four, five, for example. Then there's negative numbers, minus one, minus two, minus three, etc. Then there's a fraction, like one quarter, one half, one eighth, one sixteenth. And then there's a decimal number, which is like point zero point two, zero point three, etc. When we're studying numbers, we learn about zero. Zero is used as a placeholder number, like 100. The two zeros after the one give you a placeholder of what to make this number 100. Three zeros makes it 1,000, and one zero makes it 10. Zero also exists between positive and negative numbers, where you have minus three, minus two, minus one, then zero, then one, then two, then three. There are many types of symbols that we use for numbers. Let me zoom in here a little bit and let you take a look at this. Okay, we have some examples here of symbols used for numbers. What we use primarily are the Arabic numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But there's also the Roman numbers where it's got a symbol here for one. It looks like an I if we were writing it in English. And then we just have two of those for two and three of those for three. But when we go to four, we have a V, a symbol that looks like a V, and then another symbol looks like an I on the left. And that means one less than five, and so that's four. And then this is the symbol for five, and this is the symbol that for six. It's, it's five plus one, so that's six. Five plus two, seven. Five plus three is eight. And then the symbol here that looks like an X in English is actually ten in Roman numerals. 
So 1 less than x is 9, so that would be 9, the Roman numeral for 9. Then this is 10, this is 11, and this is 12. And then we use the, the what looks like the English letter L to represent 50, and the English letter C, which is a numeral in Roman numerals, which represents 100. In Mayan, it's, even, it's a little more interesting. One dot means one, two dots means two, three dots means three, four dots means four, a line means five, a line with a dot over it means six, a line with two dots over it means seven, a line with three dots over it means eight, a line with four dots over it means nine, and then two lines, one above the other represents or means ten, and then two lines with a dot over the top means 11. And two lines with two dots means 12. So we, you can see how this progression would work up to count the larger numbers. One of the more interesting numbers is binary numbers. Binary numbers are the numbers used in computers. And let's zoom in a little bit more here and get this to focus in. Okay. I'm going to focus on that where we can see it. All right. Let's take a look at this. Here's the binary numbers which are used in computers. Remember, binary numbers only have two digits, one and zero. And that's the way computers process numbers is by using a high or a low. A 1 represents a high voltage uh, and usually 5 volts, and a low represents no voltage, which is usually 0, or some change in relationship of voltages, but I'm getting too complicated here for a kid's math class. And so the binary number for 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1, then 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0, and so when that 1 is in this position, that means 2. And then 0, 0, 1, 1, means 3. That means a 2 plus a 1 equals 3. A 0, 1, 0, 0 means 4. And a 0, 1, 0, 1 means 5. And a 0, 1, 1, 1 means 7. And how do we get 7? It is 5, or it's actually 4 plus 2 plus 1. See what I'm doing here? If you look over here for 4, there's a 1. And then here's a 2. And here's a 1. So 4, 5, 6, 7, when you count it up for the binary number for 7. So it's 0, 1, 1, 1. And then 1, 0, 0, 0 means 8. 1, 0, 0, 1 means 9. And 1, 0, 1, 0 means 10. And 1, 0, 1, 1 means 11. And 1100 zero, zero means 12. 1100 zero, zero means 12. Uh, repeat again. 1011 one, one for 11. 1100 zero, one, 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 zero, zero is 12. In octal, this is octal means an 8 base number. In Arabic, we're using a 10 base number. In Roman, we're using a 10 base number. In Mayan, we're using a 10 base counting system. In binary, we're using a 2 base counting system. And so this only goes as high as 8. And of course, hexadecimal, which is also uh, used in computers, is a 16 base system. I know we're probably getting a little advanced for a kid's math class, but I wanted to get this just put in here right away so that we could have it and get an understanding of it a little early. I don't expect you to grasp this all instantly, but I want you to at least be exposed to it so that you can learn from it. In octal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are the same as they, have, they would be in, in Arabic numbers, our base 10 numbers. But when we go to 8, it's a 1, 0. When we go to a 9, it's a 1-1, one, one. and when we go to a 10, it's a 1-2, and when we go to 13, or when we go to 1-3 in octal, that's 11, and 1-4 in octal is 12. So, even though these symbols right here look like something you would recognize in Arabic numbers, 
base 10 numbers, they actually mean different things if someone tells you this is an octal system. In hexadecimal, it's very sim similar to what we have in our base 10 Arabic system. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But when you get to 11, it goes A. And then 12 is B. And it goes C, D, E, F. And when you get to that one, then the next one would be 10. Because this is a 16 base number system. So I really think it's important right here from the get-go to get an understanding of these different number symbols and systems because you're going to be exposed to these maybe not the Mayans so much but you will be exposed to the Arabic and the Roman and if you are in the computer age like we are you're going to be exposed to the binary, the octal, and the hexadecimal. I want to give you an assignment until next time. Right here we have our numbers grid with the Arabic, the Roman, the Mayan, the binary, the octal, and the hexadecimal. And I want to you to draw a grid and you'll see there's missing elements in this grid, especially over here on the right hand side. So I want you to number it 1 through 12 and then fill in all the blanks for next time when we come back and I'll show you the answers to these. But take some time to, if you need to stop the tape or if you need to stop viewing on YouTube, uh, freeze it, take some time to look at this, draw it out, and fill in these empty squares and learn the relationships of these different kinds of numbers. These are symbols that represent numbers and different systems, uh, basis of uh, of counting, for instance, you know, this one's 10, this one's a 10 base, this 10 base, this is 10 base, this is 2 base, this is 8 base, and this is 16 base. And it will really help you to learn the relationship of these numbers to draw this out and fill in these boxes. So for next time, uh, draw this out and fill it in and we'll go over it on the next one, okay?